All right. Um, so welcome everyone to our May Lunch and Learn. Um, we will be hearing from Safer Communities Montana, um, from Carolyn Patterson, and also uh, about St. Peter's programs with uh, Haley Weismiller. Uh, so I will turn it over to Carolyn. Okay. You got my slides? Yes. Great. Maybe. Let me see if I can. There we go. Great. Okay. So hello everyone, my name is Carolyn Patterson. I am the AmeriCorps VISTA. I'm working with Safer Communities Montana, which is a subgroup of the Lewis and Clark Suicide Prevention Coalition focused on access to lethal means. Okay, next slide. So before we get into the nitty gritty of what Safer Communities Montana is up to currently, I wanted to first develop a picture of the landscape we're working with. Uh, we know that firearms are used for a litany of reasons, whether that be for sport shooting at ranges, taking part in the extent of hunting opportunities in the area, and even self-defense. We also know that firearms can hold personal value to an individual beyond the activity that they are used for. We see this in the transfer of firearms inside of a family throughout generations, as well as the collection of antique or historical firearms. We know that firearms are a regular part of Montana life. Um, statistically, we're sixth in the nation for firearm ownership, as well as third in the nation for firearm industry-related jobs per capita, which was pretty surprising to me when I learned about it. Um, with all this in mind, I think it's important to note that Safer Communities Montana campaign strives to work within this landscape to promote safe storage techniques that already exist within the firearm community. The only new thing that we're really doing is linking safe storage to suicide prevention. Um, safe storage is part of firearm culture, our work is highlighting the link between safe storage and safer families, facing mental health crises by educating on the positive impact of reducing access to lethal means. All right, next slide. When I talk about lethal means, I want to expand that definition from just firearms to include pharmaceuticals as well. As you can see on the slide, although firearms are the most common method of completed suicides in Lewis and Clark County, and the numbers are fairly shocking, overdose is the most common means of attempt. Nationally, 70 to 90% of all suicide attempts are by overdose. However, it is the least lethal method with only three to 11% um, resulting in death. Whereas with a firearm, 93% of the time it results in death. With that being said, these numbers should not indicate a preference to addressing just firearm related suicides, especially since much of our data on pharmaceutical related suicides leave out data on overdoses where suicidality is not explicitly indicated. Given what we know about com comorbidity and a link between substance use and mental health concerns, it's crucial that both components of lethal means are addressed. Next slide, please. Thank you. It was precisely this desire to address both components of lethal means access that led to the development of the Safer Communities Montana subgroup and public awareness campaign. SEM for short was born from the Lewis and Clark County Suicide Prevention Coalition as the crisis intercept mapping work group developed for the Helena Mayor's challenge to address lethal means in at risk. Although the term at risk comes with its own debatable connotations, communities such as service members, veterans, and their families. To adequately serve the SMBF community, it was crucial that SEM address the specific risks that they face. In Lewis and Clark County, as well as nationally, veterans are at, risk, are at increased risk for suicide and suicidal thoughts. And given their comfortability and familiarity with firearms, it's not surprising, although it is saddening, that veteran service members and their families are more likely to use firearms, a notably lethal method, during a suicide attack. Cultural comfortability with lethal means like this requires a culturally competent, community-driven support. Before embarking on this campaign, my current partners and predecessors, as I am a VISTA that was recently brought on in January to initiate our distribution phase, began researching how other organizations across the nation were stepping up to address lethal means. What they found was its own rabbit hole, for sure. Um, you could theorize uh, over that stuff for years. Um, although the discussion on lethal means and its many data sets were making their own ideological rotations around the public health sphere, only a handful of organizations were actually developing a community-based educational model that necessitated collaboration with firearm and pharmaceutical communities. Although there is a 
certain enjoyment to extensive conversations deliberating on a seemingly intangible issue. Um, in Montana, suicide is tangible. It's all around us and, it in, and its impact stays with us, even as we live on to have happy, healthy, fulfilling lives. With this infant fact of life in mind, Safer Communities Montana will serve as a pilot for and make recommendations to the state on what a community-based suicide prevention model addressing lethal means could look like for a larger Montana. Next slide, please. A sense of what that model looks like in action, I wanted to briefly overview the materials and opportunities that Safer Communities Montana is currently offering to all of Lewis and Clark counties. First off, we collaborated with prominent members from the firearm and pharmaceutical communities, such as Capital Sports and Prickly Pear Sportsman Association, um, to develop a variety of print materials that will be displayed on the upcoming slides, such as tip sheets for firearm dealers, range operators, pawn shops, and pharmacists that are meant to be displayed behind the counter and serve as an educational resource on recognizing the warning signs of suicidality and how and when to slow down sales when necessary. We also have developed shareable wallet cards and postcards that educate on safe storage and share resources to find help. SEM also offers QPR and COM suicide prevention trainings for a variety of organizations and individual needs on request. That is not so much my job, more so Jess's, um, but please get in contact with Jess if you are interested in that. She's great, she does an amazing job. Uh, yes. And then we also uh, provide combination gun locks and deterra drug deactivation systems that can be used to eliminate the lethality and ease of access to firearms and pharmaceuticals. These efforts could not have happened without supportive funding from the Montana Mental Health Trust Grant, which allowed for the purchasing of safe storage tools, educational print media, and radio and physical advertisement spots with KGR Radio, Montana Radio Company, and Off the Wall Media. And of course, the project is also supported by AmeriCorps, which assisted in assigning a VISTA to Safer Communities Montana. That's me. Hello. So our next slide, you will see our, yep, these are our tip sheets that we were speaking about before. These will mostly go behind the counter in pharmacies, firearm ranges, firearm retailers, and pawn shops. On the next slide, I believe that you will see our postcards and wallet cards. Yep. Um, and they've been surprisingly useful during our outreach. Um, I've already had to reorder, I think, two things off of uh, my desk. Um, I found that they're not always useful for organizations with little or no public foot traffic, um, but they're great resources for organizations that do face the public or produce material packets for public distribution. Um, we recently found great success through delivering our postcards through information packets given out during LCPH vaccination clinics. We got over a thousand postcards distributed in those, and that was really exciting. So on our next slide, you can see um, the advertisement we developed by Off the Wall Media based on our educational postcards that you had just seen. Um, this ad is currently being displayed at over 20 organizations throughout the Helena area inside bathroom stalls. I could start a conversation on the effectiveness of this particular method of advertisement, given the time dedicated to looking at the back of a stall door, um, but I think you guys get the gist. Uh, either way, very exciting. And in our next slide, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about our radio advertisement. So thanks to, oh, it's actually the poster. Oh my, it's great. Um, yeah, this slide is our posters. These are what we have been distributing uh, throughout Helena. We're also beginning our rural outreach where we are trying to get these posters at Trailheads and any organization that will really take us. Okay, now on our next slide. Yeah, there we go, radio advertisements. Thanks to funding received through our grant, as well as in-kind donations from Montana Radio Co. and KGR Radio, we now have two different radio PSAs on rotation throughout the week. Although the slide is dedicated to our radio presence, uh, we had a very talented member volunteer to develop videos to pair with our audio PSAs, uh, one of which was already been shared for the Out of the Darkness Campus Walk that happened this past month, which I would like to share with you today, if you could press play. I'm actually going to stop share and reshare so I can share the sound. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no problem. Um, just a moment. Let me find my mouse. Lost my mouse. Thank you. 
the things we secure in our daily lives. Seatbelts, check. Helmets, check. Front door, check. You lock up everything else to protect yourself and your family. Lock up your medications and firearms too. It may save a life. You can help limit lethal means for suicide attempts by practicing safe storage. For more information on saving a life by locking and storing firearms and medications, and to find tips on how to help a loved one in crisis, go to safercommunitiesmt.org. Safercommunitiesmt.org. Save a life, check. I love that video. Um, Jen Preble made that for us. I think that she is so amazing. I have embarrassed her about it so much. Um, and Whitney is the person voicing that who helped us out from Montana Radio Company. Uh, so uh, if you went to our next slide, please, Julie. Yes. We are currently in the rollout process of our communications plan and have successfully engaged volunteers to get some of the materials that we have just seen, such as our posters, wallet cards, postcards, and tip sheets into local organizations throughout the Helena area in outdoor public spaces, such as the walking mall and various trailheads around town and throughout Fort Harrison. We have also developed partnerships with some truly great people at Shodair, where our postcards are now being distributed during discharge and throughout local Helena Gay Strait Alliance clubs, thanks to Lisa Pontic. Outreach to our rural populations, as well as East Helena will begin in the next week and our targeted outreach to firearm retailers, ranges, pawn shops, pharmacies will occur during the month of June. We are also very excited about a couple of partnerships that are currently in development. We hope to work with Carroll College throughout the summer to eventually get materials throughout the campus for the fall semester um, and have already had a conversation with Jason Grimace, who is responsible for storing student firearms on campus where we were able to leave him with some of our materials as well as gun locks to distribute. We are also working with the mobile crisis response team from St. Peter's Health, so you guys, um, to work out guidelines for gun lock distribution through the, uh, through the MCRT during a crisis call. And finally, a partnership I am very excited about building is one with members from this meeting. We would love to get materials out to anyone who is interested. It could distribute them or even just refer us to another organization you think might jive with our message. Um, we're also happy to provide gun locks or deterra to anyone who has used for it. Um, and we are looking to expand Safer Communities Montana Group and would love to have any of you engage as we continue the rollout process. If you'd like to contact me to organize something, potentially a presentation or just a materials drop off, you can call me at 301-602-5259 or email me and I will drop my contact information in the chat box below. Um, of course, uh, you can also go to our website at safercommunitiesmt.org where you can find the contact SCM page that has both me and Jess's information on it, as well as other educational resources. Thank you so much for listening. I think, Carolyn, one other thing that folks can do is share social media posts and we can make a toolkit if that would be a, uh, that would be helpful. So just sharing some of the messaging so that it's not just coming from us, that it's coming from multiple organizations. Thanks so much, Carolyn. That's really awesome. I love that video um, and the, that radio ad too. That's, that's great. Um, any questions for Carolyn about the Safer Communities Montana project? We mostly have St. Peter's and Public Health here. <laughs> and Head Start, Head Start showed up. Um, so we have a bulletin board that we use in our lobby. If she has any materials, we can um, de definitely post that information. That's perfect. Um, just send me an email and I can get those out to you. I'll drop them off. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I will turn it over to Haley to share about St. Peter's programs. Thank you. I did not have any particular slides prepared, so mine's a little less formal, but I just um, wanted to talk briefly about a couple of new um, lifestyle management programs that we've added on Connect. So this is Stepping On and Health Coaches for Hypertension Control. So these two join other program listings on Connect. Um, we currently have free now our tobacco cessation program as well as inch by inch our diabetes um, prevention program and um, 
So let's, we'll start with Stepping On. So it's a fall prevention program that empowers older adults to um, carry out health behaviors that'll reduce the risk of falls. So um, through, let's see, it is seven weeks long um, and it covers balance and strength exercises goes through um, identifying home hazards, talks a little bit about safe footwear and the links between vision and medication and risk for falls, as well as um, just mobility out and about in the community and also how to cope and uh, the proper way to get up after a fall. Um, in order to be part of this program, individuals need to be 60 or older, have either had a fall in the past year or are fearful of falling. So that of course can include quite a few people. Um, live independently in a home or apartment. So this isn't um, appropriate for individuals who are living in, in a skilled nursing facility, for example. Um, do not have a diagnosis of dementia or other cognitive concerns and folks who can mainly ambulate on their own um, with slight assistance from walkers, canes, or other assistive devices. And that's about it for that one. So then the next program is Health Coaches for Hypertension Control. And this one is an evidence-based program. It comes through um, the Clemson Institute for Engaged Aging, and it's an eight-week program that meets weekly for about an hour and a half. It's um, been proven to help improve the health of folks who have the diagnosis of high blood pressure. Um, it teaches folks how to manage the condition, focusing on nutrition, physical activity, stress management, um, and other, other topics. It's facilitated in small groups and one of the great things about this program, individuals who participate, they receive a free electronic blood pressure monitor, um, cookbooks. There's uh, an additional book, I believe it's specifically about um, chronic disease self-management and a couple of other freebies through that. Um, and we are holding these in collaboration with a grant through DPHHS. And um, both of these programs, I forgot to mention, actually all of these programs are free. The um, Freedom from Tobacco, Stepping On, and Health Coaches for Hypertension. They are all free. Um, none of them require referral from a provider. Individuals in the community can, can refer themselves or um, feel free to send us a referral through Connect. Haley, I took the Freedom from Tobacco course and uh, it's been more than nine months since I had a cigarette. So it is a really excellent program. It's uh, taught by someone who also has been a former smoker. So it's a no guilt kind of program. So I thought it was amazing. Thank you for that plug and congratulations to you. Great work. Congrats, Jess. Um, thanks, Haley. Any questions for Haley or Sarah? We can pick Sarah's brain too about everything happening at St. Peter's. I'm sure they know. They have their hands in lots of things. Um, well, thanks. I just want to open it up to um, any other questions or networking or communication. Just, um, welcome, Jennifer. I'm glad you're you're here. Um, if anything um, uh, is hopefully relevant for Head Start or other agencies, um, yeah, definitely let us know if we can help at all. I also want to ask y'all what you might want to hear about in future months on these lunch and learns.
Julie, thanks, thanks for having us here. Um, yeah, just a Head Start update. We continue to enroll kiddos for the 2021-2022 year. So if you know of families with three to five-year-olds um, that are coming into uh, preschool age, we would love to see them. Um, and we are on Connect, and Christy is super fast when, when you do a Connect referral. Um, she's fast at getting back to you. So we'd love to see families. And Julie, in response to your question, um, I've been really just pleased to see a lot of programs that I hadn't heard of before on Connect. So I really appreciate that. I know when the man came on, and I'm blanking on his name, and I'm embarrassed to say that, they just come on, came on and talked about documents that they could do with, with families, estate documents, and all that kind of stuff. I had no idea that even existed. So I really appreciate um, just hearing about programs in the, the area. So thanks. Yeah, thanks. Um, that was um, Montana Generational Justice, um, John McCree, um, for anyone who wants that, that info. Um, yeah, definitely let me know if there's anything else I can um, help with, with Connect or other connections, anything you want to learn about. Um, yeah, I'm going to um, stop the recording and uh, keep the Zoom room open for anyone who wants to chat or network or anything. Thank you all so much for being here.